Hey friends, it's Peggy Hall back with you from the healthyamerican.org. Have you heard this story? It just came out in November and it is all about data brokers selling U.S. military personnel info. I want to bring this coverage to you and then bring you a solution. And then I want to talk about any of your personal stories. I want to share what happened to me. And it was not so much that they were selling my data, although I am concerned about that, but I do have some protection. But it is the way that we are being targeted and how that could put us at risk. I've had my well, it's not exactly a bank account, but I've been canceled by PayPal and Venmo. I've had issues with my website, with different delivery mechanisms for my newsletter. And so I am always personally concerned about my data online. And I also want to give you a bonus tip about what you can do to protect yourself if you do do online purchases. That is something that I do. And it's something that a lot of people have been doing, especially since all of the hogwash was sloshed all over us in the previous years and people weren't able to go shopping. So the first thing I want to do is actually bring you this story. And I've got um, a headline here. And it says U.S. military members' personal data being sold online, being sold by online brokers. So get this, sensitive, highly detailed personal data for thousands of active duty and veteran U.S. military members can be purchased for as little as one cent per name. And this is happening through these data broker websites. Let me know if this has happened to you or someone you know. And again, this study just came out uh, by Duke University in November. And researchers warned that data can be easily obtained and used by malicious actors to target current, I'm just reading the headlines here, current and former military personnel, we're going to dig a little deeper, their families and acquaintances with them. I mean, imagine that even if you're an acquaintance of a military member, they can track you through these things. So there's blackmail, misinformation campaigns. And I actually want to show Show you this report, and I will have a link for you if you would like to dig deeper. So let me share my screen, and we are hopping right on over. And this is it, data brokers and the sale of data on U.S. military personnel just came out last month. So I highlighted a couple of interesting points here. The data brokerage ecosystem is a multi-billion dollar industry comprised of companies gathering, inferring, aggregating, and then selling, licensing, and sharing data on Americans, as well as providing technological services based on that data. All of this is troubling to me. So this is the entire report, uh, just about 50 pages. And I wanted to bring to you this other highlight that it is not difficult to obtain sensitive data about active duty members of the military, their families and veterans, including non-public, individually identified and sensitive data, such as health data, financial data, and information about religious practices. And it is, this is absolutely stunning because the other thing, and I've got a couple notes here that I wanna share with you, not only are they getting the information such as the name of the individual, their home address, their email, their cell phone number, their marital status, homeowner, homeowner status, estimated home value. How would you like all of this personal information about you being available for people to buy and even just know about um, if they made charitable donations? And this is has implicated more than 10,000 service members. And again, they're paying basically pennies for this information. These data services that are selling this information also sold info about medical conditions, financial situation, credit score, political affiliation, religious identity, gender and sexuality, address contact information, even on their children, their ages, their sexes, their families, their family members, including their hobbies. Um, and think about this, how this a person could be in, implicated in this. Let's say that they were going to a casino or a certain type of bar or somewhere else, how that information could get out and be harmful. It This also included information related to international travel, lots of sensitive information, including their geo location data. 
And uh, remember on your phone, these data brokers know where you are, where you go, and they sell that information. I know that is of a concern to you. We've spoken on this channel before about, and I'm chuckling a little bit because it's so strange that you can be thinking about something, not even talking about it, not even researching it. And you're like, it's coming up on my phone. I mean, I've done videos about these very strange things and I want to try to minimize that. And I know that you do too. So the geolocation data, really, that is a huge risk. Think about the bad guys in uh, foreign locations that would try to stalk or track you. Now, I'm not a person that lives in fear, but I do want to be smart, which is why, you know, I use these virtual backgrounds. That's one thing that I do to protect my privacy. And in the early days of all of the hogwash, I, mean, I was doing a lot of lives. I was showing everybody where I was going. And I had more than one person say to me, you know what, Peggy, you might want to just be a little more anonymous in terms of where you are, who you're with, what you're doing. I thought, you know, at this stage of the game, it's probably a good idea. So I don't want to be, and I know you don't want to be targeted as some, you know, political or military or high profile person where they're going to try to get your information and even worse, track you. So again, they can figure out and find out where you're going for medical treatments. Um, of course, we know all about, you know, medical status, how we want to keep that private. So think about this the active and veteran military members and their family members and their acquaintances have now had this information at risk and people are paying for it. So they could be at risk for profiling, blackmail, um, targeting with information campaigns and under other things. And basically we are all under this kind of risk. So it's not just the military, although this came to mind because of this report, but basically they want to get all that information and target us as well. And this is where I want to share with you a, it's actually a sponsor message, but it ties right into this article and it is a way, it is a solution that can help you fight back. So I want to share that with you. And this is a company called Aura. It's a new sponsor to the program. I'm so grateful to be able to bring you this kind of information so that you can protect yourself as well. It is an all-in-one digital safety tool that can identify identify these data brokers. So what happens is they can, this company will go to work on your behalf and they will submit these opt-out requests for you. Brokers are legally, it's so funny, isn't it? They're legally required to follow the law. They are legally required to remove your info if you ask them to, but they make it super hard to do so. So let Aura handle it for you. I want to actually show you where that is. And of course I have a link for you. And I want to thank my healthy American audience who has been thanking me for bringing these messages. One subscriber said, I'm grateful that you show us this. You've done the legwork. It's something you would like us to know about. So take a look here. I'll have a link for you. It's Aura, A-U-R-A dot com slash Peggy Hall. You can start a free trial. Um, there you go. 14 day trial plus up to 70% off. I want to make sure I have all of the important points to share with you. And it's a very affordable price. You get peace of mind knowing that these plans include up to $1 million of identity theft insurance for each adult. And you can get five adults in your family plan. So that's fantastic. Again, 14 days for free. I want to show you how it works. So I really would love for you to do this. This is a company and a product that I trust. It's a US-based company with a 100% US-based support staff that's available 24 seven friends. I don't know about you, but the last time I called Verizon, I couldn't really even get through. So the fact that you can get somebody on the phone from the U S if you need help is fantastic. Let me do this. I want to show you, um, well, here's the, the pricing and how much the comparison with other programs that you might want to do an antivirus protection, password manager, identity, monitoring. A lot of people do that. Uh, the VPN, which I've talked about uh, in years past, but this is like an all-in-one. You know, the home title monitoring, the data broker removal, all of those things would add up to quite a bit more than the $12. And that's the individual plan. What I want to do is show you, I think this is really cool. So this is just a, an eight second little um, example of how you could get an alert 
to let you know, get a critical alert if there has been a compromise on your passwords, for example. So you would get something like this that just comes through and you would they would tell you what to do, why you're getting the alert, what they're doing and how you can uh, take care of that. And then here is an example of this uh, kind of information that that they are that the bad guys want to get their hands on they can find out exactly your device id right every device has an id this is data that can be sold the device type is it a cell phone is it a laptop uh, the timestamp of when the device hits the location the precise latitude of the device the longitude the all this other stuff and of course the ip address so i wanted to bring this to your attention i wanted to take a little extra time to explain what's going on and why this is so important and then again please go to aura aura.com slash Peggy Hall. You've got this free trial, 14 days, up to 70% off. It is very simple. You sign up, you activate your account, and then you are protected. And friends, the reason I'm so sensitive to this is because being a public figure, and I don't know if it's just because of that or the type of work that I'm involved in, but I feel that I have been targeted in different ways. I have had this kind of protection on my devices. And it's interesting because I know when it's active because I will get, well, th there will be ways that I will understand that. And I will see that. I'm grateful that there are opportunities like this to have your data protected. A couple of years ago, I did an event kind of, I'm thinking about it now in retrospect, I'm not sure I would have done it. And it was a very large event. I know that there were thousands of people that viewed it, um, several hundred in person. It was in Anaheim. Perhaps you were even there. Lots of great speakers. And I, I was one of the speakers. And the very next day, I mean, I don't know if this was a coincidence. It would be a, it, it, I think it's more than a coincidence. The very next day following this event where it was a very well-promoted event, I was canceled by PayPal and Venmo and not just canceled by PayPal and Venmo, but they froze my funds and it was money that I needed. It was money that some of you had donated to me. It was money that had come in from programs and products that I was selling. And I was absolutely stunned. And I thought that there was an error. And this was prior to PayPal issuing their very strict terms and conditions. And I immediately started to do some digging. And the reason I'm giving you this example is just to let you know how in general, we are being targeted. And I want to have every bit of protection that I can. So this type with Aura.com to protect my data from being sold and my device IP addresses from being known, that's just another layer of protection. How I'm protecting myself from PayPal and Venmo, it's a little bit of a different story, but I wanted to tie it together because frankly, I actually had not been well informed on what those terms and conditions were. Come to find out, PayPal and Venmo are not subject to the same banking regulations as your own bank. Now, I know there are horror stories out there of people having their bank accounts closed. Dr. Mercola, who is a prominent voice in uh, natural you know, healing and so forth, and he has been a prominent voice in the health freedom movement. I know some of you are, you know, are on either sides of, of uh, what you think about him, but the point is he was in the news because of the bank, I'm not, I'm not sure, I think it was Chase, I could have that wrong, but the fact is his bank canceled not only his accounts, but those of his family and associates. There are horror stories about banks closing people's accounts. Just as an aside, I'm not giving any financial advice, but it's probably a good idea to have different bank accounts at different banks with different amounts of money so that you're not going to be left high and dry. If you're, you know, you're counting on that many to pay your, your mortgage, your car payment, whatever, you know, bills you have and uh, the money that's coming in for your livelihood, it, it just is logical that you would want to protect that maybe in a couple of different bank accounts. That's a horror story to me. And I lived through it with 
PayPal, come to find out there are no banking regulations. It's not a bank. It's like a transfer of funds. Even though I would transfer that PayPal money out of PayPal every day, maybe every other day, I should have done it every single day. That day that I tried to do it, that's when the funds were frozen for six months. And they told me that they were doing an investigation during that time to determine whether or not I had come across those funds, you know, in a a nefarious way. And apparently I guess they could keep the money if, if that happened because I'm on the up and up and I'm not engaged in anything that's fraudulent. They did release that money, but it was several months. I never got my money back from Venmo. It was a few hundred dollars, but it's the principle of the thing. And they just froze that account. I also was using Stripe as a payment gateway. And in 2021, they also froze that account for, oh my gosh, a couple of months. And that was money that I relied on for my livelihood. There had to be an investigation. I had to provide documents and all of that. I'm like, this is crazy. And it was at the height of all of the hogwash. So that made me very sensitive and aware to how easy it could be for you, your data, your money to be at risk. And I'm not a person that lives in doom and gloom. I'm a solutions oriented person. So I want to give you one more tip here. If you are purchasing things online and you don't want to expose your debit card, especially to risk. And the reason why is a debit card does not have the same protections as a credit card. Now I'm a person that does not believe in debt. I don't want to go into debt. Um, I you know, cut up all my credit cards, but using a credit card with a limit, and you can actually have a very low limit card. You can even have a card that you preload with money. So it's not a traditional credit card where you would get yourself into trouble. But using that card that's not tied to your own personal bank account, having that be a dedicated card for your online purchases is going to, and again, this is not financial advice. It's just something that I know is a good tip and common sense. That could help protect you from putting your own bank account at risk. Debit cards do not carry the same level of protection as a credit card. So a credit card, you can, and again, I'm not a banking financial expert here, but this is my understanding and my experience that a credit card, you could put in a dispute. There could be uh, you know, a charge and a chargeback where with your debit card, it. although I have had some investigations. <laughs> I got to tell you the end of the story, which is really interesting. It usually takes a longer time and it's not as straightforward. So if you are shopping online, perhaps a preloaded, prepaid card that nobody can get access to. And as a bonus, you've got your own budget set in because you get to determine how much you want to have on that card. Let me know in a comment below, do you protect yourself with any of these types of programs? Like the one I told you about, aura.com slash Peggy Hall, where they will monitor to see if your data is being sold and if there is any other fraudulent stuff going on. I want you to dig in by checking out the website. I'll have a link for you in the description box below. Then think about the prepaid paid debit card. I do not use PayPal or Venmo at all. There is a an app, I guess, or a mechanism by which you can do a direct bank transfer through Zelle. Some people do that, but I do just simply do not use PayPal. The Stripe got all sorted out. And the there, there was one more thing that I wanted to tell you. And this was about what happened with PayPal and my own bank. About a year prior to PayPal freezing my account, I had some suspicious charges on my own personal bank account. And the weirdest thing is it was charged to Google. And there were, I think there were three charges for $500 each. And I thought, this is so bizarre. I'm not advertising. This was prior to the Healthy American. I've not bought anything. Like, what does Google sell other than advertising? And I put in a request to the fraud unit with my bank. And I said, would you please check into these charges? Because I have never entered into any contract. I've never purchased anything from Google. There are three exact equal amounts, like month after month. So it almost seems like that would be a charge for advertising, but I never did it. So would you please investigate this? Because I think that's wrong and I want my money back. So it took 
several weeks, and by several weeks, I mean probably a couple months, and they came back and they said, you know, we cannot find any evidence of fraud. So these charges are going to stay. And I was completely indignant. I've been with this bank almost 20 years. I'm like, you're believing Google over me? I never made these charges. I was really upset. And I was planning on changing banks. And then when, you know what, all of the hogwash happened, I got distracted and I, I never did. In fact, I tried to open an account at Smells Like Wells Fargo. Oh, excuse me, Wells Fargo. <laughs> I, I have nicknames for different banks and things. And the reason I say that is because they were so discriminatory against employees, especially on religious beliefs over these last couple of years. But thankfully, due to the healthy Americans that I mentored and educated who stood up for their rights, Wells Fargo finally got rid of all of those illegitimate, illegal, immoral, unethical, unspeakable requirements in order to keep your job. And I think you know exactly what I'm talking about. I went to Wells Fargo. They wouldn't even allow me to open up a bank account. I'm like, what do you got to be kidding me? I can't remember at the time what their reason was. I think it was God's rejection, was God's protection. I never ended up going with them after all. But there have been so many more restrictions and regulations in opening up bank accounts after the Patriot Act, uh, you know, following a non Nine one one. So I never ended up going with a different bank. And then guess what? Literally, within I just was it was within a matter of days after PayPal canceled my account, right? And this is like I don't remember the exact time, but maybe a year after I had disputed the charges with my bank against Google, I get a letter in the mail from my bank. And whenever I get a letter in the mail from a bank, my heart kind of pounds a little bit. I'm like, am I overdrawn? Did I do something wrong? Is there a bounce check? Maybe that's just me, but I don't like getting letters from the bank. So I kind of looked at it. I took a deep breath and I opened up the letter from the bank. I shared this in a previous video back in 2021. Maybe it was 2020. And the letter said, we have concluded our investigation of your claim against Google. And we have found that those were fraudulent charges and we are redepositing or, you know, reversing those charges. So that money is going to be showing up in your bank account and friends, my lovely, healthy Americans, that was almost, it was within the ballpark of the money. It was almost exactly the same amount of money that PayPal and Venmo had taken from me. And I'm telling you, that was like a heavenly hug. It was a reminder, the way I view it, um, from God that I was doing the right thing. And I just found that so interesting. Let me know if you've ever had an experience like that, specifically with financial dealings where maybe somebody owed you money and then somebody else, you got a financial gift, or maybe you were able to bless someone financially. These stories are so encouraging to me. So there you have it. Let's stay protected. Let's keep our eyes on our data. Let's minimize the possibility that information about us is being sold. That really rubs me the wrong way that people are benefiting. And I know they are. I know this phone and my computer, um, you know, Technology and e commerce, uh, they kind of um, have sucked us into it. So let's push back in the ways that work. I hope these solutions were helpful for you, friends. Thanks for being on board with me. It's a little bit of a bonus video for you. I normally don't broadcast on the weekends, but there's so much that I want to share with you as we close out the year. And I'm so very grateful to have you on board. I think I will have. I know I will have a special video for you on Monday. It will be a premiere, meaning I will have pre-recorded it, but I want to make sure that you get this message. You know what? Maybe just possibly, depending on the time frame, Pastor David and I might just hop on with a special New Year message. Maybe we'll do it on his channel instead, which is True Hope with Pastor David. And that is on YouTube, where every Tuesday, he has a True Hope Tuesday full of spiritual encouragement. Yes, I think we'll do it that 